What is going on, everyone? It is Destroy with Astro DFS bringing you the Friday video where we break down the tight ends. Um, yeah, two expensive tight ends this week. Are they worth it? <laughs> Maybe. Not too sure, but uh, we're just going to break it down. Uh, no, tight ends, I think, this week are very few. Um, I think there's only a handful of options here. So uh, in my honest opinion, tight ends this week are going to be decent. Uh, I could see easily three or four tight ends being 20%. Um, and then there's some sleeper tight ends. So uh, kind of difficult, but we'll, we'll we'll go over it here. So let's start it off. George Kittle playing Washington. Washington Redskins against tight end are a top 10 terrible defense against tight end, allowing 337 yards and only two touchdowns to tight end. Uh, Washington terrible run defense, which is why the passing isn't as good, especially to receivers against Washington. But San Francisco does have a three-headed running back. Uh, might go to a two this week, but George Kittle is always just a, a viable option. I mean, you, you can look at his his numbers lately. Two 20-point performances, only one touchdown. He's been targeted eight times in the last three games. Um, doesn't have an injury. And everyone is healthy on Washington, or not Washington, San Francisco. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't make him any more of uh, an interest than he already was. Solid option, but at 6,700, it's just, it's just really hard to uh, afford Kittle there for somebody whose uh, max game is 20 points this season. I'd rather go with a couple other people that have exceeded that. George Kittle, you know, best tight end last year, actually beat a good chunk of wide receivers. Probably <clears throat> you could put him in the top five receivers for last year too. So it's just 6,700, just way too expensive. Evan Ingram, great play. Like th this is a play I I'd rather go Evan Ingram than George Kittle here, just because it's safer. You're playing against an Arizona defense and everyone knows, unless you're Tyler Eifert, Arizona's defense gives up points to tight ends. Seven more points a game. That is the biggest leap in defensive positions than any other position um, higher than quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. You know, it's, it's so crazy. Seven. Some of the other ones are two, three, but seven. Yeah, that's, it's ridiculous. He was the only, he's the only one that I would pay above six K for in this matchup. I still don't know if you can really afford them. There's just so many good options and receiver a couple good options and tight end for cheaper defense is a lot of plays there. So uh, it, it's just the price point. If you can get to him, by, by all means, get to him. If you can't, he goes off. Guess what? There's only going to be a certain amount of people that play him. They do. They have to pay down to other positions substantially. So, if you can afford him, go for it. Hooper, Austin Hooper, playing the Rams. Uh, Rams, another top 10 terrible defense against tight ends, uh, allowing only 13 points a game to tight ends. 348 passing yards and two touchdowns. Uh, granted, I do believe we can go and check really quick. All of Atlanta's injuries were announced. Yep. So everyone's clear. Everyone's going to play. Uh, Hooper, the only reason I just have more interest in him than a lot of people is Jalen Ramsey just got traded to the Rams. Great cornerback. He's going to lock down whatever receiver is playing. So Austin Hooper could get some more targets this week. Um, not looking for a huge... Uh, yardage game, we've seen him get it in two games over 100 yards. We've seen him only get three touchdowns this year. Uh, this game should be, th this should be one of the only games that I can honestly say should be a high-scoring game. Rams, like I said, uh, all week just came off of a blowout. Great matchup. Atlanta, their offense is just a passing offense. Matt Ryan's thrown for over 300 yards. They score. So, should be a, a lock for a high-scoring game. 
uh, plus they're home. So Hooper's great play at 5,300 here. Uh, Mark Andrews at Seattle. Seattle, the fourth worst defense against tight ends, uh, allowing 405 passing yards, three touchdowns, um, and it's Mark Andrews. I, I think a, with, with his injuries, a lot of people have been afraid of him, but week one and two is what you got to look at. Granted, week one, he got a late touchdown, so you could take the six away, but he still got eight targets, nine targets, seven. The lowest amount of targets he's got all year is seven, and he only had three receptions that game and only had 15 yards. This is a game to where Seattle gives up points against tight ends. Baltimore, I I think we could double check, but we'll check Marquise Brown. I think Marquise Brown is going to be out. Uh, yeah, so Marquise Brown is probably going to be out. They're going to have to pace Seattle. And Mark Andrews is one of those guys that is just... We, we've seen him. 28, 27 points start the season. We've seen him get touchdowns. He's there. He's another red zone touchdown guy. And they're playing Seattle, who gives up the fourth most points to tight ends. So, great matchup there. Darren Waller. Uh, Oakland's going to be without Williams again. Uh, Green Bay, on the other hand, does not allow a lot of points to tight ends. To be exact, Green Bay's only allowed 27 passes to tight ends for only 210 yards and one touchdown. Granted, Darren Waller has exceeded so many expectations. Not a lot of people knew who Darren Waller was before Hard Knocks. I didn't either. I'm one of those people. But we've seen this man be targeted 14 times. Granted, I think this game might be a low-scoring game just because Green Bay is without a lot of receivers. Oakland doesn't have a lot of talent at receiver. We might see a defensive showdown, uh, but defensive showdowns help Darren Waller because Darren Waller is going to get 10 10 targets, and you could say you know, 5 yards each target just because he's going to be a quick throw to get some yards. They're not necessarily going to score a lot, but if they do score, he's one of the top targets seeing that Williams is out. Jimmy Graham playing Oakland, kind of kind of a different story, but not crazy. Uh, so Jimmy Graham, we saw him, uh, the three receivers go down, and the thing that scares me is Jimmy Graham's had some really good matchups this season, uh, really good opportunities with injuries, and We've only seen him get an 18-point game and a 12-point game, and that was both touchdowns. He take the touchdowns away, he gets six points against Chicago. Five, well, five technically, if you want to take the uh, reception away. Uh, and I won't do the math for yards. In Philly, he only gets 12, 11 if you take the reception away. That's crazy. Like I said, it, I'd rather go a cheap Green Bay receiver than Jimmy Graham at this point. Jimmy Graham can get three touchdowns for all we know, but it's just not a safe play. It really isn't. Hunter Henry, on the other hand, Hunter Henry just came back off an injury and is playing the Tennessee Titans. Um, kind of average against tight ends, 26 receptions for 275 yards. But guess what? They are the tied for second for most tight end touchdowns allowed at four. We saw Henry come back. Uh, granted, I don't think... I don't think he's going to get a 33-point game, to be exact. But with um, the Chargers healthy, I believe all the Chargers are healthy. We can look at that. Yeah, all the Chargers are healthy. Creates a lot of options, again. Um, and Tennessee can't lock down everyone. Hunter Henry's clearly been a really good favorite target for Phil Rivers. $4,000, perfect price point, so... Uh, Hunter Henry is honestly one of my favorite plays here. Um, Eric Ebron against Houston. Um, Eric Ebron is not the same tight end without Andrew Luck. And then shown, granted, he really had a great second half of the year. Uh, we're only in week seven, and we've yet to see Eric Ebron go off. Granted, they play a lot of two tight ends. Um, and whenever you play two tight ends, the, the tight ends suffer. But... The Texans are just crazy good against tight ends. Only 209 yards allowed, no touchdowns. Um, just not a good matchup, in my opinion. No matter the injuries on Houston, uh, they clearly protect 
the middle of the field against tight ends. Delaney Walker being questionable. Uh, I'd still just not want to play him against the Chargers. Not really a favorable matchup, especially with a backup quarterback going in. Um, Garrett Everett, if you're going to play a Ram tight end, in in all honesty, just, just because of his, his upside, I would play Everett. Uh, it's just Higby. We've seen him get a lot of targets and receptions. Um, But Everett, we've seen them have an explosive game. So, granted, like I said, great matchup in that for the the Rams Atlanta players. Like there, there's hardly anybody from that game that I honestly don't think is a good play. There's uh, so many great plays in that game. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of game stacks um, for the Rams Atlanta game. Uh, TJ Hawkinson playing Minnesota. Minnesota is a top seven terrible defense, giving up 395 yards, but have yet to allow a touchdown. Um, Hawkinson, we it, it's hard to say with that Detroit team. He's got two touchdowns this year. After week one, I think a lot of people thought that they were going to make TJ Hawkinson a star tight end, but Yeah, clearly, the most targets he's got besides week one and week six is four. He had three, four, three, which kind of scares anybody. And plus with uh, Galladay and Jones healthy and Amendola being a a really good slot against Minnesota's defense. Like I said, Minnesota, they give up a lot of yards, a lot of receptions to tight ends. Um, It's just we haven't seen Detroit commit to TJ Hawkinson yet. Jack Doyle... um, same thing for Eric Ebron. I'd rather play Eric Ebron any day of the week. Uh, Ellison has no interest anymore with um, Engram being healthy. Uh, Dawson Knox, it, it's, it's hard to say because we don't know what Tyler Croft is going to be involved in. Um, I haven't heard or seen much about Buffalo, what they expect to do against or with their tight ends. Um, we can, we, we've seen Knox have a good connection with Allen. They're going to be home playing against Miami. Uh, worst defense in the league. Um, you don't even want to read off stats because they're not true because at any time these teams can literally just destroy Miami. Um, but they don't. It's at, at some point it's just embarrassing. So if you read into anything, uh, maybe it makes interest more. Both of them are great price points, 3,000, 3,300. Uh, it's, it's just depending on what they say that they're going to do with Croft. Uh, Trey Burton playing against the Saints here. N- not really interest. Uh, Trubitsky is going to be back. They're playing New Orleans. Top 10 best defenses against tight ends, uh, 271 yards, uh, one touchdown. Uh, Atkins, Fells, playing against Colts, top three worst defense against tight ends, 334 yards, 32 receptions, three touchdowns. It's just you don't know which tight end is going to do what. They are another team that runs two tight ends. Gives a lot of snaps to tight ends. We've seen... Atkins just go off against Chargers, two touchdowns, 73 yards, 22.3 points at 2.7. Um, and then we've seen Fells to where Fells has got three games above 10, uh, where he was 2,500, 2,900, and then went up to 3,100, which is at right now. Um, so if you play anybody, I'd honestly be more comfortable just playing Fells. Um, Sorry, Luke Wilson playing Baltimore. Uh, no interest. He's he's not really a uh, receiving tight end. He's more of a blocking tight end. Um, I would honestly go Jacob Hollister if you're going to go tight end out of there. Um, I, I just don't want to play Wilson there. Hurst, Andrews is playing, no interest. Uh, and that's it, guys. I'm not going to go over anybody else. No one else really stands out to me. Um and there's not a lot of tight ends injured either that makes interest. So that's it for the tight ends, guys. If you 
enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. We do appreciate all the support that's come our way the last week. It's been crazy good. Um, and follow us on Twitter at AstroDFS if you're interested in more content and more information. Uh, anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. We will see you in tomorrow's video. Uh, I'm going to have two videos out, injury report uh, and the defenses. So make sure to watch, tune in and just enjoy those videos as well. And we will see